I greet you in Jesus' name. Let's take a look at um, John 3.16. Uh, many of us want our children to learn the scripture verse and uh, it's one of the greatest scripture verses that we can uh, teach our children. But uh, more than, than actually teaching our children the scripture verse, um, I would say that there is much more greater revelation uh, within the scripture verse that uh, if you have some time, uh, explain to your kids, uh, explain to your kids why John 3.16 has been chosen to be such an outstanding uh, scripture verse. Uh, it basically, it sums up the entire salvation work uh, that God has done for us, but sometimes a simple scripture as one that we've always repeated suddenly pops in a revelation that we haven't seen before, and that's the beauty of our God. Uh, I hope that you are having a uh, spiritual worship uh, lifestyle. Uh, whatever situation you're going through, remember the best way to overcome it is to spend time in worship. Uh, worship your God. Um, worship Him even though your emotions may not tell you to worship Him, but just continue to do so. Um, there will be break, breakthrough. Uh, whatever you find hard in life, hand it to God because remember He's ever willing to carry it with you and more especially to carry it totally on himself because he's already done the finished work for you and he's promised you that he says cast your burdens unto him uh, for he cares for you so he does not want you to face life alone uh, neither will your family but just know that when we look at John 3 16 again let it remind you how much God has loved God loves you and how much you mean to him and how worth it you are that he chose to send someone so precious to you uh, to die on your on your part uh, and your behalf in your place um, if you look at John 316 let's break it down uh, someone once uh, spoke about this uh, when I was younger um, and some of these things um, I, I'm just trying to remember from what he spoke uh, but whatever additional that has come to me I just want to add it on and um, and give you that word because it was a blessing to me and it and yet again today it was reminded that I uh, that I tell you about this. So I said I'd rather just listen to the prompting of the Holy Spirit and share this with you. Just remember one word from God will change your life forever. Uh, so we have uh, John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but they have everlasting life. Uh, if we start out we say for God. We stop right there. For God. Uh, he is the greatest being. There's none other, higher than him. And not even... Um, the Big Bang Theory can dispute the fact that there is a God. Scientists themselves uh, are not willing to eagerly say that there is a God, but they do admit that there is existence of a God. Because the Big Bang Theory is not a theory that is complete on itself. Um, you find God himself has existed before time. And uh, some of the things that scientists say that have come up through the Big Bang Theory, you cannot explain it just through the purpose of a cell. Uh, like people's emotions and intellectual uh, ability, um, uh, the outstanding abilities that people have. Um, the, the Big Bang Theory is limited in terms of ex explanation. It is just a theory, but we know that uh, our God is a fact. It is a fact that, that our God exists. And the very fact that we feel Him in our hearts, we can't stop saying that we know He believes. And if somebody asks you, how do you know that there is a God out there? How do you know that Jesus is alive? You tell them the same way you, you feel an emotion, the same way you, like, you feel something. Let's say you feel a, a headache or you feel a, a, a pain. Uh, that pain exists, that headache exists the same way you know that Jesus exists because you feel, feel him in your heart. And that's, that's the only way to explain it because you will only be able to express it because once you feel it. And um, Jesus is a person. He's been invited into your life and he's, he's made himself active to you. He's the greatest being. That means everything comes from him. Everything was made by him and for him. And, and if we have this in our mind that God is the greatest being, there will be a reverential fear in our lives uh, when we live our lives. You know, there's a, there's a huge difference. We, we should not fear God because he's, uh, he's a huge God that, that uh, people portray as wanting to uh, punish us for our sins. But more than that, just like how you would respect your father, your earthly father, you respect him reverentially in the sense of 
you respect him, you show him the respect that deserves of a father. Uh, when he speaks, you are quiet to listen to him. Uh, when he gives a rule and instruction, you're willing to not question it, but just do it because that's your father. And the likewise, the greatest being is God himself. And he um, he's active in your life. So when you live your life, wake up in the morning knowing that the greatest being is on your side. Uh, if God is for you, who can be against you? Um, so know this here that, that that your God is greater than the biggest mountain that you know. He's greater than the, even the, the entire universe itself. Nothing can contain this God. Uh, that's how awesome our God is. Uh, he's an all-powerful God. He's, um, he's an omniscient God. Uh, he knows all things. Um, wisdom itself flows from him. Uh, so he's an omnipresent God. How is he able to be active in your life in one part of the world, yet he's active in somebody else's life at the same time? And this is something that, that the devil cannot do. That's why he has demons running around to do his bidding. He's not able to be omnipresent. So just know that that, that God is that powerful. And the devil himself has nothing, nothing that makes him equal to God. And you serve a God that, that no one can compare to. And that same God is, is ever willing to wake you up in the morning and to hear from you and to talk to you and to commune with you. So you have a great God on your side. Um, you know, sometimes we say he's a mighty man of God. Uh, but basically I would say he's a man of a mighty God. You know, we give, give our reverence to God. Uh, he is the mighty. He is the Almighty. Uh, so wake up tomorrow or wake up today or even from now on, even as you, you switch off this uh, media, you know, just have the attitude that you've got a great, huge God on your side. And, uh, and He loves you more than you can ever think or imagine. And it's further when you read the scripture verse, it says, For God so loved. Now, the word love, this, the Bible speaks about three types of love. You get the love of God, which is agape love you get the um, eros love which is the love between a man and a wife and then you get uh, filio love which is the love between a brother and sister and if you notice it that the the beauty of the word love uh, even as we look at it the greatest of it is agape love which is god's love for us and this typifies the the cross if you look at uh, agape love it's your love between god and you it's the vertical and if you look at filio and eros, it's horizontal. But look at which which one is the bigger, which one is the is the longer. It's the vertical beam, and that means God's love is the greatest love you can ever experience. And it portrays the cross, even as you talk about the, the three different types of love. So, our first reverence should be to the agape love. Our first attention should be to the agape love. He is our first love above all else, above your husband, above your wife, above your kids above everything and you know sometimes our kids are so um, uh, close to us it's so dear to us but more than that and that is why you look at Abraham and Isaac uh, Isaac must have heart must have been torn apart to lay down his son um, because just because God asked it you know he, the thought of laying down your own child um, uh, as a sacrifice to God is it, 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 it it blows your mind. It it like it's so painful because your child is looking at. Can you imagine how Isaac looked at uh, Abraham to say, "Dad, what are you doing? Abba, Abba, what are you doing? Uh, what's going on?" The confusion that Isaac must have felt because he had to do what God told him to do. But Isaac was obedient. I mean, uh, Abraham was uh, obedient uh, to this. Abraham Abraham did what God asked him to do. And so too, if we put ourselves in Abraham's place, that's exactly what God did for us. The greatest love, his son, he sent down and he laid it down. And he says, because I love these people, because I love my creation, this is the only and perfect plan to save them. And can you imagine? That is why sometimes uh, on the cross, they, uh, Jesus cried out, uh, Father, why do you forsake me? Think about it, how God turned his face against uh, Jesus for two reasons. As a father, he, he, he must have been quite hard, as, as though they, they are one person. But the role at that time, is, is it, it's quite dear to find your own child being uh, tormented and uh, punished in that way. 
And then the other plan, the other way is that Jesus turned his eyes again away from God because we, he had our sin upon him. And God cannot look at sin. God is an holy God. He's a just God. So, so that's why Jesus said, Father, why do you forsake me on the cross? So just know that the greatest love is on your side. Uh, the agape love is on your side and ever willing to be poured down from heaven onto you and constantly poured down to you and remind yourself that you are a loved person that is why um, uh, you know when Jesus was uh, tempted I uh, know Joseph, uh, Pastor Joseph Prince spoke on this uh, he said um, that the devil did not want to remind Jesus um, that he was the beloved he says aren't you the son of God he didn't use the word beloved because the devil will never want to remind you how loved you are. Because when you are loved, you're secure. You're secure in who you are. Um, you wake up in the morning, they'll know that you're you're a lo you're a child of God. God holds you dear to Him. Uh, just like our mother would lay down. No, a mother would think would not think twice about laying down a life uh, for a child. God didn't think twice about laying down uh, His life for us. So know that uh, that's the value to which God uh, holds you and um, never doubt that uh, you're not loved. Um, sometimes, you know, our problems outweigh uh, our, our view in terms of looking at the love of Christ. It's like the sun shining on us and yet the clouds just come and hide, hide the love of God away. So, so to, we just got to know that, you know what, God is still there. Is even though he's hidden, even though he's quiet, but he's still there. And uh, I just want you to hold on and know that the love of God will carry you through. Is the greatest love, and that greatest love is still continuing to this day. And it has a perfect plan for you. A plan that one day you will be with Jesus face to face. Um, so have that in mind. You have uh, the love of God, a fountain of love, constantly flowing towards you. Um, and carry the cross. The Bible says that you carry your own cross. Carry the cross because sometimes there are people that we have to deal with that uh, test the way we have to love people as Christians. And uh, it's it's really hard. But take them 